My dot files repository has kind of featured in a couple of videos so far, but we've never taken a close look at it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, if you're not familiar with dot files repositories, the idea is that you have a single place where you can capture a lot of different application configuration. Now, usually these are plain text configuration files, so not every application supports that. And to be honest, mostly this is used for like command line tooling, terminal configurations, that type of thing. But if you, like me, enjoy using the command line a lot, then your dot files repository will be something you maintain pretty regularly. Now, of course, you don't have to store these configurations in a Git repository, but I like doing it because it makes it easy to track version history. And also I use them across multiple machines. If you got your own personal machine, maybe a work machine, maybe an older laptop that you occasionally use, this is a great way to make sure you have the same setup across all of those machines. So we'll take a look at my dot files first, and then we'll look at ways that you can get some inspiration for your own in other places. So we're here in GitHub, and this is my personal dot files repository. I've made it public, but if you want to do the same thing on GitHub, GitHub has free private repositories now, so you can keep that private if you would prefer. So the way I have this structured is that we have a single folder for each of kind of the high level tools that I use, and then uh, some other just catch all folders for some other things. We've got Alacrity, uh, we've got Git, Carabiner, LVIM. Now, some of these are from tools that I've used in the past, like Vim or NVim or Mutt, and I don't really use them that much anymore, but I keep these around in case I ever choose to go back to these. So if we take a look at a couple of these, I think you'll see there's a pretty common pattern. We could look into ZSH here. Now, in any one of these directories, we'll have a couple of different configuration files, but then we also have a links.prop file, and this is part of the installation process. So when I install the dot files, I have a script that will symlink everything into place. The idea here is that if I symlink all of these config files into place, I'll be able to maintain the actual copy in the repository. And so as I make changes there, I can continue to commit them. Symlinking them basically just puts those links into the correct places where those applications will expect them. So for example, you can see that inside of my dot files repository in the ZSH folder, we have rc.zsh, and that is going to be linked to my home directory .zshrc. Now, if you've been wondering why these are called dot files repository, it's because so many of these tools uh, use the convention of a hidden file, which starts with a dot. And so we have .zshrc, they're all dot files. That's the idea. So the way I break up my shell configuration like this, because this is probably one of the most configured applications that I have, is we just have a couple of different files. For example, all of my aliases and functions, they go into this one alias file. Then there's a git.zsh file here that shows you some git specific functions. Actually, I think this is all about my git logging. A lot of my dot file stuff, I will say, I've captured from other people, including some of the structure that I use to format this repository. I copied this git log output from Gary Bernhard, and copying from other people's dot files is something Thing I do pretty regularly. I'm not always good about attributing it like this, but there's so much great stuff out there that you can learn from when you're setting up your own dot files repository for the first time. I don't think there's much else interesting to show in other folders here. Um, one thing I do have in the kind of root RC file is it's going to pull in the other things. So you can see we pull in the history, the git, uh, and the aliases as well. And so this is how these things are kind of imported. Uh, and then we only have to link the ZSH file itself. One of the reasons that I've broken my ZSH configs into multiple files is that it makes it easier to resource part of them at a time. So for example, ZSH has this pre CMD function, and this basically runs every time you hit enter or get a new prompt in your shell. What I'm doing here is sourcing my aliases file every time. Now, if I was going to source the whole ZSH config, that would really be pretty slow. Sourcing just the aliases is pretty fast. And I do this because often as I'm working, I'm adding new aliases and reconfiguring things. And so this means that basically I get those changes hot reloaded every time I get a new prompt. I never have to think about manually sourcing those. So that's one little trick that I really like. The rest of these just have pretty standard config files. Alacrity is the terminal application that I use. And so we have my Alacrity yaml file here. One thing that I've experimented with, but I don't think I've ever really got this completely working, is some of these tools don't actually come installed on most machines. And so I have an install file that should do whatever installation is necessary. The idea here is that I want to be able to take a brand new Mac, uh, run my dot files installation and have everything set up. I haven't quite got that working yet because obviously it's not too often that I'm working on a completely new Mac. So I need to spend some time on that. Also, one thing I would love to do in the future is have these dot files work just as 
cleanly on, on Ubuntu or Arch Linux system. Obviously those operating systems won't have homebrew, so there would need to be a little more work involved in that. Other things here that I think you guys might find interesting, uh, SKHD is a pretty cool hotkey management tool that I use on Mac OS. It's really cool because basically you can just define keyboard shortcuts that work globally to specific command line tools. So you can easily write shell scripts that perform some set of commands and put those on a global keyboard shortcut. I have a bunch of these built in here that I use pretty regularly. I have one here that does a bunch of configuration for setting up my Mac to prepare for recording a YouTube video. I've added a couple of global keyboard shortcuts to Slack. And as you can see, these all reference something in the scripts repository. So let's go take a look at that. The scripts repository that I have here, I actually need to clean this up because I've got both scripts and bin and I kind of prefer using bin, but I forgot about it for a while. And so I was using scripts, but we've got a bunch of scripts in here that are essentially just shortcuts for commands that I often run together. You'll remember a couple of videos ago, we made the git branch manager and that's of course living in here. Send keys.js is a pretty interesting one that I think you guys might like. This is using Apple script. So it's Mac OS specific, but it's not actually Apple script. It's Apple scripts or the AppleScript engine's um, JavaScript interpreter. And there's really not great documentation out there for using JavaScript with the AppleScript runner. But I was able to find just enough to create this send keys script. The idea here is that we're going to switch focus to another application, send a keyboard shortcut, and then switch back to whatever application you're currently running in. So the idea here is that if an application doesn't give you um, the ability to make a global keyboard shortcut, but only a shortcut for when that application is focused, you can turn it into a global keyboard shortcut or create another global keyboard shortcut for that uh, by using this application. Now, it doesn't work perfectly. Unfortunately, if you have multiple windows of the original application open, I can't figure out how to choose exactly which window to refocus when you switch back. But it works well enough for me most of the time. This is actually what I was using for some of those Slack keyboard shortcuts so I can easily go to my unread messages page without really losing focus for too long on my current application and not having to use the mouse at all. If we take a quick look in the bin directory, you'll see a couple of other scripts that I've been working on here, easily writing something to a journal, um, syncing some of my personal notes around, formatting bank transactions. This is a pretty fun one that I added recently where I can basically just select a bunch of lines from my uh, online banking and then pipe that input through this script to format them in the plain text accounting format, which I kind of use sometimes. I also have a backup script here for backing up uh, my YouTube videos to an external drive. So let's see, I think that kind of covers most of this here. Of course, the install directory here is where we have the bootstrap script. We looked at this a couple of videos ago, but basically this is what actually reads those links.prop file and then links everything into place. I've been working on trying to get the install dependency scripts working for Linux and Mac separately. Um, there's a macOS.sh script here. This is pretty cool. And I would say, I'm pretty sure I just copied this directly from someone else. Yeah, I didn't write all of this. But if you're on a Mac, you probably should know about the defaults command, which basically allows you to set a bunch of um, operating system configuration. Some of these things are configurable through system preferences. Some of them are not. This is a cool thing to read through and see what you can configure just via the command line tools. But it looks like I got this from this website right here, which is another dot files repository shared on GitHub here. That is my dot files repository. Let's talk about other people's dot files repositories for a second. So obviously um, there's this one by, I hope I say this correctly, Matthias Binance, and he's got a lot of great stuff in here. So I would definitely recommend you check out his stuff. But if you're interested in just more stuff on dot files repositories, there is the GitHub topic for dot files. Matthias here is the top one with 28,000 stars, but there's a bunch of other great dot files repositories here that you can check out and learn from. One of the reasons of course that everyone shares these is so we can learn from each other. So if you see stuff in here that you like, definitely copy it, use it, and make it part of your own .files repository. There's one more resource I'll point out, which is linked right here, .files.github.io. I think this is an official GitHub site, but they have a bunch of great links here on tutorials for how to learn about setting up your own .files, inspiration, linking to a bunch of other .files, and then some tips and tricks as well. There are even some general purpose utilities that they talk about here, which are frameworks or libraries specifically made to make it easy for you to manage .files. So if you don't wanna set up shell scripts to do all of that linking for you, you can check out some of these tools and create your own .files repository with much less work. Well, that is a quick look at my dot files. If you have a dot files repository, definitely put the link for that down in the comments and I will check those out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.